recording. I just finished doing an interview up at Lake Mansfield with, with Stephen Pedigo for the World City Conference. It's being held in Spain in September. And I thought, well, it's all fresh in my mind. I would just do a quick recording to go through a couple of the points that we discussed, because I think they're just generally useful for anyone who wants to know something about what I'm um, doing with this new book, this new version, this new this sequel to this, The Great Good Place Revisited. That was what Stephen suggested that I call it. Um, we first talked about the difference between third place and public space. And it was a perfect location to do that because we were sitting in a most beautiful public space um, on the lawn by the beach in the Lake Mansfield Recreation Area. Uh, marvelous and, uh, and ac actually an excellent example of, uh, of a modern, a 21st century public space that also has a lot of environmental benefits, um, but a real community resource. But it is not a third place. So Stephen asked me, of course, well, how would I define or how did Ray Oldenburg define and how am I defining third place? What makes a third place a third place? So I went through the seven points, which Ray has set out in various ways. And um, let me go through those quickly. The first, he, he would call it, it's a leveling place, meaning that it's open to everyone. It's accessible in the sense of uh, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, what color your skin is, um, it's it it le and and it actually levels people. People are equal when they enter. They cease to um, the hierarchies and 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 differences that exist out in the real world are at least to some extent leveled. Um, they're open um, in the sense that you can move freely in and out, uh, and and. Move move in freely is important, but it's also, and Ray has, has emphasized this, and I've really experienced it, you don't want to feel stuck. If you walk into the wrong place, you want to be able to turn on your heel and walk out and have it not be too awkward. Some of us are not shy about this. I'm not shy. But some people would you know, kind of feel like they'd been captured and trapped in this uncomfortable situation. No, you should be able to walk out, go down the street, find somewhere better. Uh, and they are not necessarily cheap, but they're relatively inexpensive. That's another kind of accessibility, isn't it? There could be expensive things on the menu, um, but there should be an inexpensive option as well. You should be able to sit, sip just a cup of coffee, order an inexpensive draft beer, or a bottle of a bottle of Fosters, as my friend in um, at the Star of Greenwich said. You know, so that's what a lot of people want. And that's and that's fine. And that's that's important. There is no no one checking you in. There's no membership fee or if there's a membership fee, it's a modest one that you're not paying you know, every time you enter. You know, like um, Kathy uh, Jufre was explaining that there is a membership to the the her third place, her pub in the village. But it's, it's something that, you know, is a very modest annual fee. Um, and that's fine. It, some some people have got the idea that a, a third place has to be free. Um, if it's free, it's going means that the the cost of it is going to be paid for either by the government or by some nonprofit agency, and that is not necessary by no means necessary. And it's not actually typical of third places. Third places um, throughout the world and throughout history have generally been some kind of commercial establishment. And then there's the issue of what I think of as walking and talking. Um, third places should be convenient and accessible. Ideally, for sure, they're within walking distance. Um, and that's important, not just because if you go to a pub, it's really great that you don't have to think about driving home. And that is a, a, a super good thing to have um, if it's possible. But the, the main thing is, is it's it's, it lowers the barriers to entry, the kind of friction of going, because I I know a lot of people feel that it just is so much effort to go out. You know, they feel like, you know, you have to wear certain clothes, you have to, um, you have to kind of remember, you know, your phone and your car keys and your wallet and, 
and who knows what other arrangements you have to make. And then you have to drive somewhere and, you know, maybe it'll be, you have to check if it's open, you know, all these kind of things that become barriers where if it's close to your home or close to your work and it's open, you know, regular hours, it's very reliable. You know, you just, there's no timekeeping involved. There's no responsibility. And that's really, really, really important. And then the thing, perhaps the central thing is that third place is the primary activity is conversation. It's being with other people. Sometimes it's listening to other people. You don't necessarily have to be talking all the time. You can sit in a corner and just kind of be present, um, be an audience maybe for people who are a little more extrovert or who are just in a mood to talk. Um, so the walking and talking piece. And then there's then there's the 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 two pe the two factors that always make me think of cheers. Um, one is that there are regulars, um, people who turn up over time. You see familiar faces. It makes me think of cheers because part of the the cheers theme song is it's a place where everyone knows your name. They don't know everything about you. They may not know your family. They may not know much. They might not even know what you do for work because maybe you don't talk about work when you go there. But they're familiar enough with you and you're familiar enough with them that you probably do know their names and you have some biographical knowledge. And strangers are welcome. But strangers, actually strangers feel much more comfortable when they're people who are regulars. And a stranger who's brought there by a regular is going to be accepted more quickly. So you get a variety of relationships, but those regulars are key. And then the the, the true measure of a third place is how it makes you feel. Because you should feel good when you walk in. You should feel a weight come off. As one young journalist said to me when I said, you don't have to make a, a arrangements, a plan, set a time to meet someone at a third place. You don't have to go with anyone. You can just go there. And she said it was like her whole body relaxed because she didn't have any experience that was like that in her life. Really important. And you don't have responsibilities there except to be reasonably congenial. You don't necessarily have to talk, but at least maybe smile occasionally. You know, look reasonably friendly would <laughs> be nice. Um, but, you know, if you're moody, if you get to be a regular, um, people will understand and maybe, you know, leave you alone if you're in a bad mood. And that's okay. Being around other people makes us feel good. And you should leave a third place feeling better than you did when you walked in. You should have a spring in your step. You should, your spirits should have risen um, and you should be better prepared to face whatever else is going on in those other places in your life. Uh, Stephen, because he works in uh, uh, a lot of things to do with, with town planning specifically and community development, he wanted to know what I, uh, when I mentioned that I was adding material in the book about the design of third places, the actual shape, the physical arrangements that promote a third place experience. Because you can have two places that, that look pretty much the same, but one can be a, a vibrant third place and the other one simply is not. So what, what are those factors? So he wanted to talk a bit about that. Uh, and it's there are many factors and I will be covering them in the new book. But um, one really um, basic thing is the entrance. The entrance needs to be needs to be very clear where you walk in, and um, if possible, there's some staging so you can kind of get close and think about it and take a look. Terraces are the classic example, um, so that you you feel um, that there 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 are steps, and you can make a decision as you go in, and. And it's also very important once you're inside that you feel you can leave if you need to. You don't feel trapped by the way the design, the, the the place is laid out. Tables are hugely important. Third place is almost always involved at least something to drink, if not something to eat. That often referred to as watering holes for a very simple reason. The public baths are and um, thermal baths and um, like Japanese sentos are also. It's another kind of watering hole, I guess, but, but, um, liquid, um, is classic. Um, and that means tables. 
generally speaking. Um, tables for two, rows and rows of tables for two, that is not a third place. Circular tables, probably. Um, the arrangement of tables so that there's some interaction possible. Um, small circular, a lot of small circular tables, that seems to um, work better. There's something about square tables. That it, it, my impression is I have to look to see if there's any research on this, that square tables are um, somehow more confining. Um, they suggest people just looking at the person at the table with them and not beyond. Um, a Chinese person would want a larger table. The Chinese groups of, of at least six or eight, certainly for meals um, and even for drinks is much more common. You know, you're going round, toasting and that, and, and I think that we might learn something from that. Bars are really great, but you have to think about, just to think, think of a few places, you know, coffee shops tend to have a bar, um, but they tend to be, or a counter, but they, um, in, you know, the, the pandemic lockdowns, we ended up with these um, barriers, but coffee shops often have a lot of machines or there's stands with full of pastry and you're sort of, and maybe just windows where you, you know, place your order or pick up your coffee. That is not conducive to third place atmosphere because it's not very welcoming. It doesn't connect you with the people who are there all the time. Um, a regular bar counter, which is a bit lower and has somebody behind it who will at, at least nod in your direction. Um, that is, that's a much better thing. And I think coffee shops should emulate that. I've, I've thought about it with libraries. I was talking to a friend who's a library consultant and he feels very strongly that libraries make a big mistake by caging the staff and making them just responsible for checking books in and out instead of putting them as you would in a shop or at a, um, or a bar, uh, something that would welcome people. You'd have them at a lower counter where they could still be doing the same work, but they would welcome you there. And indeed, sometimes people feel intimidated if there's someone, if you go into a like a dress shop, fancy dress shop, and, and you're pounced on by the salesperson. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just a pleasant human greeting that acknowledges your presence, makes you feel that, you know, there's someone there you can turn to, you can ask a question of if you need to. Um, and just makes you feel that you're at home and in the right in, in a place where you're where, where you're welcome. Uh, that's that is um, important. Not every third place is going to have that because third place is very enormously. And I guess that's the last point is that they they are not there's no rules. They vary by culture very much. They vary by the type of, even though I say that they're mixed, a lot of third places attract, you know, each kind of place attracts, you know, di kind of different crowd. It might be a mixed crowd, but it's it's um, still a crowd of a, of a type. And people um, in hotter cultures, say, or in um, probably in, in less rich areas are going to use the streets a lot because the street is free. And if it's hot, it's a can be a great place, and so they'll find a set of steps or uh, or a, a, an alleyway, and it's just where people hang out. People sometimes hang out outside a coffee shop, um, a corner of a park. The, the variation is endless, but these characteristics you will um, find um, are quite consistent, and that is the other point. Third place is not a concept; it's not a theory; it's something. It's a term that Ray Oldenburg coined in order to um, categorize a certain type of place that otherwise had not been seen as similar because they look different. Tea houses in China, uh, thermal baths in Iceland, uh, an American um, coffee shop or diner, uh, German beer garden. And he realized that they all share these characteristics and they and they fill the same human need. And that's what makes a third place. They're places that make us happy, that lift our spirits, that connect us to other people, make us really feel that we're part 
of the human race. Thank you.